Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. Don't forget, if you like the video, click on like and subscribe and talk about it on chat lines, wherever it is your social media activities and help us to grow and help more people. I'll talk to you soon. Twisted <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's a made up screen name. It says, hello Mehran, 23 male Moscow. Oh, Hochin Piriadna, Minya Zabud Mehran. Uh, he said, I'd like to ask if, what if I kill someone? Oh, see, first of all, you shouldn't kill anyone. Are you talking about in OCD, right? What are you talking about? It's OCD, the same. So are you saying, first of all, tell me, is English your first language or are you Russian and English is your second language? Because I just want to make sure I understand you, right? Or should I take your sentences, what you say? So I'd like to ask if... Then in quotation, what if I kill someone, OCD, the same with HOCD? Ah, I see. Oh, yes, of course, it's harm OCD. Absolutely. Responsibility OCD, how, harm OCD. And it's all anxiety-based things. And to deal with all of them, you just ignore them. Yeah, of course, because these are thoughts. And thoughts have no actuality. There is a difference between brain, thoughts, and you. You're the boss. You're the owner of all these things. You don't have to listen to any of that shit. Not what the brain does. Not what intestines do. Not what thoughts represent. None of that. You decide if it's useful to pay attention to something or not. Not just because brain conjured it up and brain does math. So brain is smart. Brain is intelligence. No, brain is piece of shit. Brain is an equipment like your river, like like your <laughs> river, like your liver, like your kidney. It has a mandate. It has a job. It has a program. It's a tool. It's an apparatus. It's an equipment. It's been added to you 40,000 years ago, advanced from the stem brain to what it is today over years and developed to be sophisticated to, in order to be a better tool for you, in order to do things that you want to use it for to accomplish and advance your life. That's what brain is there for. Brain is not you. Brain is not your intelligence. Brain is not your leader, your teacher. None of that shit. Brain is an apparatus that when it goes rogue and it uses its own apparatus to make thoughts, you think these thoughts that are 80, 90,000 a day and they are mostly intrusive and irrelevant, but its job is to make thoughts. Why? Because brain doesn't find security in physicality. In other words, just because I'm sitting here and um, I know where my muscles are, face is, ears are, hands, legs, and everything is, and my place is locked and I'm in a good part of town, that's the physicality where I get my security from, right? That's for my body. But the mind doesn't find secure security just because it has a secured physicality, because it doesn't have a physicality. Hmm? It finds its security, like the body finds its security in environment in physicality security of the physicality the brain finds its security in occupation in doing things and so its job is to keep itself safe and secure in certain activity which is material process which is doing stuff occupying itself calculating creating conjuring up thinking that's why it's constantly in thinking mode, processes things, and when you don't need it for the things that you need it, so it does what you need, it's a butler, it's a servant. But when you don't need it, it has its own life. And sometimes while it's doing your things that you command to it, calculate this, do things, I want to learn this, it still does its own job. That, that's why you get distracted and you have a hard time finishing your chapter because while you're trying to focus on it, this bloody thing is doing its own thing calculating on what happened two weeks ago or two years ago or what he wants to do or all kind of intrusive thoughts, 80, 90,000 thoughts a day. So it finds its security in occupation. That's why it's constantly processing. And because you don't need it all day long, there are not so many tasks you want to do. It still wants security when even you don't need it. You don't give it a job. So it finds a job for itself. What's that job? Conjuring up intrusive thoughts. And why does it choose intrusive thoughts? Because when it chooses intrusive thoughts, you try to handle it. You try to fix it. You try to correct it. And it keeps putting it in there and creates anxiety and fear and anger and all kinds of emotions. And emotions give other 
thoughts and this thinking process and calculating constantly moves on so it keeps on being occupied and feels I'm doing something therefore I'm secure brain doesn't care if it's coming up with inappropriate thoughts or hazardous thoughts it just finds its security in the fact that it's creating thoughts not in the content of the thought like if it thinks that the content of the thought is dangerous it's not going to say oh it's danger I shouldn't be thinking about it no it's just Fuck it, I don't care. As long as I'm making thoughts, I can think about killing someone, I can think about raping, I can think about uh, pedophilia, I can think about um, my own sexuality, I can think about some sexuality that is not mine. It can think about whatever it is, regardless if it's appropriate to you, meaningless to you, or useful to you, or relevant to you. That's why it's mostly focused on intrusive thoughts because intrusive thoughts gives it a fight because then there is another person resists the other side then it can come up uses that would come up with all kind of other data hunting and uh, letting you to debate it and defend it and it will come up with another little bit of a nudge and pisses you off and you go more upset and then you come up and these things continues in that occupation it finds security not in the content that is oh useful or uh, uh, intelligent or um, uh, pleasant or uh, you know civil none of that shit doesn't care because it doesn't exist thought doesn't exist brain its production doesn't have any actuality or factuality therefore it can afford to think of anything and not get hurt not worry about any harm no cultural shock no uh, against its its upbringing or condition none of that shit it doesn't give a shit all it cares about is, can I be processing something? So in other words, it doesn't care about what is chewing. It could be shit is chewing. It could be vomit. It could be food. It could be a hamburger. It could be the best food in the world. It doesn't care. As long as it's chewing, that's what it wants. So as long as it makes thoughts, that's what it gives it security. Not the content of it that you wonder, why my brain thinks about uh, a gender that I'm not? or suggest that I'm the sexuality inclination that I'm not, or suggest that I'm going to kill someone or rape someone or harm someone that I'm not. Because the brain doesn't have any responsibility, doesn't care. It's just trying to stay secure. Why? Because the brain has not been taught where to be in this entity of body. You see, your hand, your fingers has a place. Your wrist, your hand has a, has a place on the wrist. And then the forearm, then the elbow, then the shoulder, I mean the you know, upper elbow, whatever it is, upper arm, <laughs> and the shoulders, and the neck. Everything has a place in your body. All the physicalities have a place. So they find their security here. You know? They have a place. You know where things are. You want to shake hands, you bring your hand out. You don't go look for it. And, hey, uh, come here, I want to shake hands with this person. You know where everything, you close your eyes, you know where the ears are, eyes, are, nose, are, teeth, are, everything. But the brain doesn't have, doesn't have a place in your body. And you haven't trained it to know that it does have a place. It can have a place. Before you train it, which is another topic for another time, which is actually uh, explained in detail in my book, Me, My Psyche, and I. If you go on my site, mindthatseekstruth.com, mindthatseekstruth.com, you will see the table of content of my books, and you can read it. A sample chapter if you push a button somewhere there and then of course uh, you know you can have an idea what the book is all about and then of course you can get it on uh, print version or ebook version which is ebook version is like one tenth of a price much um, I put it in a price that every currency from every country finds it affordable so get that book and understand the chapter that says mind needs a home I think uh, let's see that's a book and if you go, I think it's chapter 32 or something. Chapter 29 says, ego is derailing our tranquility. 30 says, approaching life one dimensionally. Chapter 31 says, hope in life. 32, meditation. 33, our mind and meditation. 34, our mind needs a home. Chapter 34, page 214, talks about our mind needs a home. That's where I discuss where mind needs to focus and how so it can find a place for it to secure itself and to rack, relax itself and not to have to be active and making thoughts all the time in order to find security through occupation and find security through meditation, find security through focus, find security through knowing that it 
also has a home in this body, has a place in this body. Because it's not physical, then it doesn't have a physical place in the body, like the hands and arms and nose and everything else. So it's constantly everywhere, going here, going there, trying to find a place where it can hang its hat in ideas, in thoughts. That's why it goes in the memory. That's why it goes ahead of the uh, present moment, going to fictitious future, and then uh, many other things that has no physicalities. So you need to teach it and condition it to have a place where mind also would be present in the body rather than being all over the place. And therefore, mind and body will be coordinated. That's when you manifest your total power, that you can unleash it on anything else it is that you want to accomplish in life. It could be tennis. It could be learning and passing your exam. It could be running. It could be all kinds of things. I used it in military when I was when I wanted to have 24-hour leave and they were choosing runners. And I said, yeah, me, me. I run good. And I didn't really. But <laughs> that's another story for another time. So anyhow, so that's how, uh, you know, you focus on what these are. These are all intrusive thoughts. So when you think about killing someone, where was I? Where did I go with this? It's, um, if I kill someone, OCD, yeah. These are all OCD subsets. Uh, you know, responsibility, OCD, you don't want to be responsible to harming anyone. Harm OCD to harming anyone, harming yourself. All kinds of OCDs, but none of them can become an action because brain thought by itself has no power whatsoever. It doesn't even exist. It is only you who can allow it and command it and allow it to have a life, to turn into action. You and only you can decide and make that happen, not itself. So when the brain comes up with some kind of a thought, no threat to you, even though it makes it threatening because the idea of it is threatening because it's against your preferences and your upbringing and your conditionings that you have received and your lifestyle. So it's threatening because something is about to threaten or suggest a threat towards what you love to be, what you have always been, and you want to protect that, what is relevant to you, and this is against an opposite of what you want, what you love, and what your lifestyle is all about, so it becomes threatening, and then you become uncomfortable. But lo and behold, remember that regardless of what the topic of the thought that the brain has produced is, it can never do anything to you because you're the only one that can authorize it, allow it, turn it to become an actuality. Otherwise, it will live forever in oblivion and never becomes anything and never can threaten or cause you any harm whatsoever. But when you think it can, then you react to what you're thinking that it can, which is that thought itself is a thought and has no actuality. So all of that is bullshit, but you're reacting to something that you believe it's real, not that it is real. It is not real unless you make it real by actions, by actuality. I have a video that talks about the roots of all thoughts is outside of you. And you need to watch that. When you watch that, you will see something that you've never really thought of. So find the, if you go on, if you go to playlist called intrusive OCD, HOCD short videos, and mind you, they're not short, all of them, you will find a video that says the roots of all thoughts or something like that, the roots of OCD thoughts or something like that. And you will see what I'm talking about when I say the roots of OCD, HOCD or thoughts is outside of you. And then that's an interesting topic, actually, that you will say, whoa, what this guy's been on, which is a question I ask sometimes myself. <laughs> so, and Natasha says, 20 Canada, sorry, female. Okay, thank you. Let's go back to Natasha. But before that, I'm going to wet my whistle. 